Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so uh, more French wine from Somme Select. Uh, if you don't know what Somme Select is, go to the last episode and check it out. I kind of went through a big explanation. So let's get right into the wine so we don't you know, talk for like 40-something minutes. Actually, the last show, I think, was about 35 minutes or less when I looked at the, um, my watch, my call it. Anyway, um, so first wine we're going to do here is the Domaine de la Bergerie Claude Le Grand Bupro Savignères. Um, yeah, it's a mouthful. Uh, 2011, $32. Um, Le Grand Bupro. I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know what that means. Um, good something. All right, so uh, Savignères. Um, what is it? Right, it's a white wine. Uh, it's the Chenin Blanc. Uh, grape. Now, um, it's in the Loire Valley. It's kind of in the western part of the Loire Valley, not quite the central part, um, not, as, not as west as being on the Atlantic coast. Um, so, um, it's, north, it's on the north bank of the Loire River in the Anjou Samur subregion. It is a white wine, uh, white wine produced from it is from Chenin Blanc, and it's almost always dry. Now, there was a time when these wines were sweet, but um, they've been more dry. They're typically more full-bodied than dry Vouvray, which is like on the other side, um, and a significant step up in concentration and quality from a basic Anjou Blanc. Yeah. All right. Um, it is relatively high in acidity and tends to be quite a long-lived wine. Um, it can be somewhat austere and unapproachable in youth. So this is four years old, it's not that young. Uh, in recent years, some producers have aimed at producing wines that are more approachable when young, but that probably will be less long-lived. Which, yeah, if you're trying to produce something that's meant to be drunk quickly, it may not age as well as something that was meant to age, right? All right, um, it was a producer of sweet wines, but today almost all are dry. Um, if they do produce sweet wines, they're usually less sweet than most wines produced across the river in the in Coteau du Leon and its sub-appellations. Uh, from 19, uh, I'm not going to go through that. In 1996, they established some regulations. Okay. Um, now the domain uh, has been in the family in, since 1964. Purchased by Marie Scholastique Horo and currently run by her grandson Yves Grigard. Um, yeah, and his wife Marie Anique. Uh, as always, adhere to a high standard of excellence. They do green harvesting, strict sorting, and separate vinification of each harvested parcel. Um, their daughter Anne um, is starting to take over and um, is trying to convert everything over to organic viticulture. And. Um, the domain is in the heart of Coteau du Leon in the Anjou region of Central Loire Valley. They have 89 acres, and uh, they're spread out through uh, Anjou, Savignier, Coteau du Leon, uh, and Quartz du Champ, uh, and their soils of schist and clay. Um, and they basically are a, Ch a Chenin Blanc grower or producer, but they also have Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Groulou, Gro Groulio. And I didn't look up that grape, so I don't remember what that is. Probably some really obscure local grape that nobody makes really wine with other than the blend stuff. That's just my guess off the top of my head. Um, I, thought I, knew, I thought I knew most of the obscure grapes in France. It's not as bad as Italy, because forget that. Um, uh, anyway, following stints with Alan Ducaze and Joel Rubichon, Anne's husband, David, has opened a beautiful restaurant on the property. So now, when I was doing the research on this, 
if you don't put the word wine next to it, you're going to get some other domain in like, in like uh, the south of France somewhere. And it's like, not a domain, it's more like a resort. So a few hundred miles apart from each other. All right, Chenin Blanc. A grape that I feel gets ignored even by me. I don't drink a lot of Chenin Blanc, you know, because I've had a lot of really crappy Chenin Blanc mostly from American producers. Um, but when I've had Loire Chenin Blanc, I've always been like, wow, I should drink more of this. So, nice golden color too, man. I didn't do the, I didn't do the color test with the reds and I can't really see anything uh, with this lighting. But um, really deep golden color. I mean, looking at that, I'd almost think I'm, I might be drinking, like an, almost maybe drinking a dessert wine, okay? Wow. Yeah, like, how would I how would I confuse this with really anything else right now? There actually is almost a little bit of honey to it. Almost, almost, but like almost like caramelized apple. Caramelized apple or caramel apple, right? Yeah, and, and just a touch of honey, which typically that means you might have had some botrytis in, in the vineyard, so... They don't talk about it, but since historically they've made sweet wines, um, that's either from botrytis or from not fully fermenting the, the wine. Um, I'm going to go with botrytis. So there might be, you know, a hint, just a hint of that. But there's also like um, a tropical fruit. Well, it's not banana, but like tropical fruit. Um, quality to it too. And, and there's just something else I'm missing. Something else that's, that I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of beating around the bush on it with saying like caramel, apple, honey, tropical fruit, but not banana. You know, it's like almost like a banana's foster or something like that. You know, there, it's, there's something that's actually the target aroma that I'm trying to latch on to. Let's taste it before the alarm goes off. Oh, shit, and Blanc, why do I ignore you so much? Buy this wine. Pfft, I'm done. Mic drop. I mean, and it, it, this is room temperature, so you chill it. Even if you chill it to, the, to a more proper temperature, not 40 degrees and from a from a refrigerator or 35 degrees from a refrigerator, it's going to be spectacular. Like, I don't want to drink this whole bottle right now. Like, I, I mean, seriously. Um, so palate, quote, confirms the nose. Um a little bit of caramel, apple, almost almost some honey, um, maybe some cantaloupe rind. There are some Chardonnay-like qualities to it, okay? But there's something different enough that make that would make me go, I'm not sure if this is Chardonnay or not. I would probably get all confused. I'd, I'd probably be like, well, is, is it quite, is, is, it, is it New World? No, I don't think so. The color makes me think that, you know, it's not, it's not pale straw color that I would associate more with like Chablis. Is this a Burgundy? Because Burgundy's gonna have a little richness to it. This has some richness to it. But that honey would throw me off. and be like, well, I don't think so, man. You know, this, and then the caramel, I'd be like, uh, you know, kind of think it's Chardonnay, but maybe it kind of was all messed up. So in, in my head, I'm trying to think, how would I identify this in a blind? So I would, I would have a lot of things going, this could be Chardonnay, but there's something about it that's not. And what other, what other white wines can have a, a, that kind of color to it that can also exhibit some of these, some of these qualities? Viognier is, is another one. But then you have things like Gewürztraminer and uh, uh, Alborino and um, 
not converse, uh, already said converse meaner, um, Gruner Velt leaner, and you know those those don't have the same color. But then we go with maybe Riesling, but it doesn't have the qualities of Riesling. So chill this a little bit, get it down, get it down to a proper serving temperature, um, and this would be spectacular to have. God, this is awesome. I'm swallowing that one. All right, wine number dos. All right, so wine number two. Um, we're going. We're going back to southeast France. The next episode is all about um, Burgundy area, but we're going to Beaujolais. All right, uh, this is the Domaine Calo or Calet. I'm not really sure. Morgan. Uh, old vines in English because I really don't want to screw up the French anymore that I already have. Uh, bought this, it's 2013, so it's still relatively young. Uh, for $25. Well, on this one, on this one uh, so my notes say, with the, basically I just copy, I cut and paste, or copy and paste a lot of just stuff instead of just taking notes. Um, so the property is in the center of the village of Morgon. Um, the brothers are Francois and Jean and are doyens of this famous crew. I don't know what a doyen is. I just copied it. Uh, they have 12 hectares spread across six different climats. Um, their pride and joy are the wines from vines ranging from 85 to 115 years old. Um, And if I remember right, they make a few other wines, right? Not just this one, but so Morgan. Uh, so Morgan is a crew appellation in Beaujolais. So, okay, everyone's heard about, you know, Beaujolais Nouveau and they've had the, the, the booth, you know, Beaujolais Nouveau at, at Thanksgiving and all that. And it's got the bubble gum and the banana and it's all fruity and blah, 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 blah. All right. So Beaujolais itself with... Uh, it's made, well, all Beaujolais is made from Gamay. Gamay is a fairly, you know, makes fairly light wines. You know, you're not getting, you're not getting like these, you know, tannic fruit bombs like you could from Cab. Uh, anyway, so, um, so there are 10 crew in Beaujolais. Morgon is one of them. And Morgon tends to make uh, earthier wines that can take on a Burgundian character. A silky texture after five years of aging. Yes, I copied it from somewhere. Um, they're, gen they're generally the deepest color and the most rich cru Beaujolais with aromas of apricots and peaches. We're about to find out. Uh, within this cru, there is a particular hillside known as Cote du Pie or Pie, P-Y, uh, in the center of Morgon that produces the most powerful examples of Morgon wines. And I want to say during my research that these guys actually have some vineyards in that area. So, uh, 25 bucks for Cru Beaujolais, all right? Wow, that's a great nose. I feel like I walked into an antique shop. I mean, yeah. It's like I can, I can smell old wood, you know, rich woods, Potpourri, spices, um, cedar boxes, um, uh, um, almost like you could smell like the oil in the wood, you know, not, not, not the, not the pledge. Okay. Not like they just sprayed a bunch of pledge and polished wood, but kind of like, you know, like wood oil that they polish it. Oh my God. I could, I could just sit here and smell this wine. I mean, I, I could just... I could be like, we're done. I don't even need to taste it. I, I, I it's twenty five bucks worth it just to smell it. Wow. Cobbled. These two wines blew me out of the water. The first two were good, and I really liked the hospitality. I really did. But these two, dude. At twenty five bucks, I'd pay fifty for it. That's just on the nose. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't smell apricots and peaches. 
Now we haven't gotten to the palate yet. So I mean, I've been disappointed before. So let's, let's rein it in and, and see how it actually tastes. <laughs> so a lot of people out here won't like this wine but i love it um it's like a christmas explosion i mean it's so it's it, it the the palate in the in the in the nose are just are equal. They're twins. I almost said mirror images, but that doesn't sound quite right. I mean, they just it continues on. It's not super tannic, a little bit, but it's really smooth. It's somewhat easy drinking. Like it doesn't it doesn't have like a like grip to it, but it's got a lot of flavor to it. Um, so, I mean, this I actually think I think Cobble's comments said something like this was going to be a wine he was going to have a holiday season or something like that. I, one of the wines I bought, he was like, this is what's going to be served at my Thanksgiving or, or Christmas dinner table. If you need a holiday wine for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or just something in the fall, and you're going to have some rich food that's going to go with it. Nothing, nothing like, nothing too overpowering over the top food wise, but just a bunch of great flavors to it, you know, um, some game, some uh, ham, uh, pork, uh, you know, less marbled meats, uh, especially if you've, especially if they're like, um, uh, you've really seasoned the, you're using uh, some um, seasoning uh, on it. Um, cranberry, cranberry sauce, uh, you know, all, all the, all the, dude, this is a Thanksgiving wine or a Christmas wine. Absolutely phenomenal. I, I would pay 50 bucks for it I, I, without, without going, I got robbed. I don't know if I'd pay, well, I'd pay whatever. Like you said, this was a $50 bottle of wine. I'd be like, okay, yeah, it's good. This is outstanding wine. All right, so now that it's opened up a little bit more on the nose, there's a little more fruit to it. Again, no apricots and peaches, but I get some more fruit, so it's not all Christmas spicy. But it's still there. Oh my God, this is just. It's a little bit of woodsy. Again, if you're into New World wines, you will not like this wine at all. You'll be like, dude, this wine sucks. Okay, it's dry. It's not fruity. It doesn't. It doesn't have any apparent sweetness to it. If you like old world wines, if you like Pinot Noir but want something a little, little bit different than Pinot Noir, it's, it's Gamay. All right, try it. So, like I said, it can be kind of Burgundian. So, I mean, there's there's some there's some body to it, or some flavor profiles that could take you to Bur to Burgundy, but at the same time, in a blind. If I was tasting this, and, and I haven't had a lot of Cru Beaujolais compared to Burgundy, but if I'm drinking this, I'm going, what's what's different about this? Why why do I why you know why do I want to take it outside of Pinot Noir Burgundy and go down to the bastard stepchild that Beaujolais is kind of considered, which sucks, but it 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 is because it's different. Um, but Beaujolais makes some great wines, and this is a perfect example of a reasonably priced wine. Outstanding. And, you know, I've had some really good Cru Beaujolais over, over the past few years, and they've always been great. So this is excellent stuff. All right. Ooh, excuse me. Good stuff, man. All right, so I'm excited to record one more episode for tonight. Um... As always, I want to thank you all for stopping by. Hey, last episode, I didn't do the... Click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over there so I can buy more outstanding Cru Beaujolais from Morgan or Morgan. Um, and uh, leave comments below. Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't talk about the last episode. So these are the first few videos since Blip TV went 
and I, I have to send back a um, uh, an agreement to uh, Maker Studios to be one of their like producers. So it's semi quasi exclusive with them through YouTube. They'll basically create a YouTube channel, or they'll they'll curate. I don't want to curate, but they'll they'll hopefully help promote my videos. But I'm still gonna be on Roku with uh, iFood TV. Uh, of course, my website still has my stuff. Uh, I saw the podcast. So um, I still I'm still gonna be distributed. Everywhere I've been distributed before, um, I won't see any expansion of different outlets. Not, not unless somebody, because I have Creative Commons, because um, my videos are Creative Commons, if somebody wants to broadcast them, they can. But um, you know, the point is that uh, Blip TV is no longer. I'm still in the at this moment. I'm still in the process of of changing 320 something more videos from the Blip player, which doesn't exist anymore to uh, the YouTube player. So um, it's just, it doesn't take that long, but it's just tedious to do it. So um, that's what's been happening. I forgot to talk about that. So anyway, uh, so frame me up, leave comments below, go to YouTube, leave comments over there, subscribe. Subscribe to the podcast, watch it on Apple TV, especially the new one, which I'm not getting yet because I have an old one and it works just fine. That's it. We'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>